Hi, this is Leroy Jones and I'm here at the Historic Preservation Hall uh, giving a few tips on uh, trumpet playing, at least from my experience. And uh, I would like to emphasize the fact that as a jazz musician or any kind of musician should not rely on the rhythm section to determine how well he or her swing should be. And I think that if you have an internal sense of the time, then you should utilize that to the best of your abilities. And I'll give an example. I'm just going to doodle around with a blues and, and say, and this is a tempo right here, and I'm going to play a little bit. And I don't have any accompaniment. I don't need an, accompany, an accompaniment. And so I'm going to stay with that time. And if, if, you're, if you're with me, you can start snapping your finger yourself. When you're practicing with a rhythm section or with a recorded accompaniment, uh, to be able to turn the recording off and still play as if you're, as if you can hear a rhythm section accompany, accompanying you, as if you can hear all those things that you hear when you're working with an ensemble. For me, I like looking at chord changes in concert pitch uh, because I'm thinking in concert, even though I'm playing a B flat trumpet. Uh, and it helps me when I'm looking at a lead sheet that's in concert to uh, be able to decipher it uh, according to the degree of difficulty uh, melodically. Uh, I can pretty much read, sight read a, a chart in concert uh, with, for the first time and go through it. Now the chords, I can look at the chords and I'm always thinking a step above. When I see an F7, I know that I'm playing a G7. I'm a step above. Often I'll tell guys to give me the chart in concert because it's it's better for me. But to each its own. Uh, whatever works for you, yeah, that's what you. That's how you should go about it. But I think you should have a chart and where you can play along, play ideas from the chord changes that you see. Play the melody first. Uh, I often find that if you have the melody locked into the back of your head, that you will never get lost in, 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 in the piece. Uh, one thing is being able to play chord changes, play over chord changes. Uh, as, a, as a jazz player, my approach to improvisation is very lyrical and melodic. So I usually play on the changes rather than in, taking embellishing on the changes and playing notes that are totally outside from from the the, the where the chord changes are. Uh, uh, occasionally I, I do it, but in a way where it's subtle enough that it doesn't create too much dissonance, uh, too much confusion <laughs> for the average listener out there. As people often in the audience there humming the melody or they're singing the lyrics and if you want to keep your gig <laughs> you want to work uh, often enough you need to to learn how to do that I think as a jazz musician <laughs>